This time she had hair spun from a red sunset, skin as smooth as warm honey and a generous mouth that laughed without moving. She was beautiful, except for her cold green eyes. From the pen of Raymond Chandler, outstanding author of crime fiction, comes his most famous character in The Adventures of Philip Marlowe. Now, with Gerald Moore, star to Philip Marlowe, we bring you tonight's exciting story, The Green Witch. <laughs> on which mortal man had tiptoed over the face of the earth, holding cold hands with fear and starting at each new shadow which the harvest moon cast. There's still another twisted, grotesque goblin thirsting to drink dry a human soul. <laughs> I read that in a book once. Read something else, too. The Vigil of Hollow Mass is a genuine spook show. It definitely started downhill with the Romans, as did almost everything else. Until now, Halloween has come to mean gate stealing, trick or treat. And of course, the malpractice of soaping and chalking everything in sight. So, today, unless you're really on your toes or under 12, and I'm neither, the 31st day of October 1949 could easily have appeared as just that and no more. Until a worried man named John Bishop entered my office. I said trick or treat, and so he unfolded a $100 bill and came right to the point. Marlow, four days ago, a man I once knew broke out of an Illinois prison. My testimony in court a year ago sent him to that prison. Now I'm afraid he's coming after me for revenge. Uh, His name is Dale Estes, and I want you to protect me from him. Is he here in L.A., Mr. Bishop? Uh, I'm not certain. However, this morning, a friend of mine told me of a man in a shabby brown tweed suit who asked about me but wouldn't identify himself. That's all the description he could give but uh, here, Mr. Marlowe, here's a picture of Dale Estes. It was in last Thursday's paper. Uh-huh. It's a prison identification picture. Well, when you change the clothes and remove the number, it doesn't leave much. Uh, no. Uh... Tell me, Mr. Bishop, what do you want me to do? I want you to locate this man, Estes, and keep him from killing him. Police will do that for nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing, plus a lot of noisy publicity, yeah. and I don't want. Because in the first place, it won't help my real estate business any, and also I... Well, I... It's somebody you'd rather not have worrying about you, maybe. Uh, yes. Madeline Hughes, my fiancée. Mm-hmm. Uh, please, Mr. Marlowe, will you try to find Estes at once, uh, as soon as possible, before tonight? Why, what happens then? Our masquerade, the Pacific Palisades Country Club. It's uh, a lonely spot out there. Well, why go to the masquerade? Because if I didn't, Madeline would know there was something wrong. She'd worry, and I'd defeat my purpose. Mm. Now, Mr. Marlowe, all I can give you to go on are three things. First, Dale Estes was once an able-bodied senior. Second, he likes Spanish food. He could eat it three times a day. And third, he'd gladly give up both to watch a prize fight. He'll kill me, Mr. Marlowe. I know he will. Maybe the magic of Halloween night had something to do with it. I don't know. But when I started looking for an escaped convict who might possibly be someplace in the sprawling city of Los Angeles with murder on his mind, things began to change. First, it was ten-year-old girls prancing around in their mother's high heels, lipsticks, and affectations. Then gangling boys screaming home from school via the great mischief route. <laughs> that much was fun. Then it got dark everywhere. The kids went home and took their laughter with them. And I went looking for Dale Estes. I seemed to meet people who wore everyday faces that I was sure could be masked. People like the old lady who ran a Spanish restaurant located off a crooked alley below the street level. And it started with her at the entrance to a damp, cold cave. No. No, senor. I did not ever see any man like that picture. But if I were you, I would look for him no further. There is death in his face, senor. I know. <laughs> got worse until, in my imagination, even the scarred, brute face on the sweating hulk in the distant, dusky corner of the third gymnasium I tried seemed to belong less to a 20th century man and more to a prehistoric brute out of some dark, long-ago jungle. Nah, nobody like that ain't been watching me today. 
Nobody ain't been watching me at all for as long as I can remember. And finally, after two hours along the Santa Monica fishing piers, a hundred withered pounds of ancient mariners staring out to sea had more to say. Yes. Yes, I know, Estes. Estes was standing next to me when the boiler exploded that night off New South Wales. He was killed. But I told the skipper all about that once already. His name was Estes, too. And so was the first mate, Dale Estes. Everybody's name is Estes. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bishop. I haven't run across anything. Uh, Hello, listen, he's been seen again. Estes. What? Yes. Or at least the man in a shabby brown tweed. This time near my office. Uh, Marlow, get over to 3130 North Havenhurst Drive as soon as you can. 3130, huh? Uh, yes, it's a costumer shop. Alberto is in Garrow. In Garrow. I'll meet you there. Goodbye. Bye. Alberto Zingara, a customer, had at least a tangible name and occupation. His shop was tattered on in grimy windows and scarred wooden door, all immodestly marked with the proprietor's name in handsome 12-inch high gold letters. With a card dangling from the front door knob reading, back in 10 minutes. Mr. Alberto Zingaro. There was nothing left for me to do but wait. Until from some place within arm's reach, the conversation was declared open. You have a match, please? Yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> Here. When I raised the cup flame toward a smiling face, sporting a mid-July sunburn topped by blonde crew-cut hair, I got ready for trouble. It never came. Thank you. Good night. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Marlowe? Yeah. Uh, Marlowe, uh, is that Mr. Zingaro going off? No, uh, just a guy out of matches. Oh. Oh. Well, I wonder where Zingaro is. He said everything would be ready and waiting for both of us. Me as Mephistopheles and you. Uh, or... Just a minute. We said nothing about me going to that masquerade, Mr. Bishop. Not a word. Uh, Mr. Marlowe, please. I'm sure Estes is going to try to get me tonight. Uh, yeah, I know, but when you want... Gentlemen, good evening. I'm sorry to be late, but there was a costume that had to be delivered. Uh, Mr. Zingara, this is Mr. Marlowe, the gentleman I called about. Oh, yes. Uh, you'll be able to fit him all right. Uh, I don't know. It depends, Mr. Bishop. On whether or not I'll stand still. Oh, uh, Marlowe, please. Now, I'll, I'll pay you anything. I know, but I... Okay. Fine. Wonderful. Uh, Zingaro, open the door. I am, I am. Now, where is that light switch? Oh, yes. There. And now, here is your costume. This? This is uh, my costume? Yes, yes, yes. You like it? You do. Oh, no. No, it, it's pretty grotesque, even for Mephistopheles. Uh, beast with wings. Uh... My finest creation. It will surely bring you the first prize at the masquerade. A fiery bear's head, horns and all. It is a false saw the devil, the lord of darkness. And look, hunched high on your back, a black wing. You pull this cord here, and the wing flap. And uh, as for you, Mr. Marlowe, now let me think. There's something you can whip up quickly, Zingo. Now, look, Marlowe, I'd appreciate it if you'd stop on your way to the club and pick up Madeline. The shoes, your fiancé? Yes, pick her up at my place. 2341, Law. Uh, 2341. Gentlemen, I have just the thing. Today, Mr. Marlowe. Tonight, Count Alessandro Cagliostro, 18th century imposter, criminal, and lover par excellence. That's me. All in all, it was another hour, and I was just about rid of the afterglow of the day's goblins when... I finally pulled up and parked in front of John Bishop's neat redwood and glass square in suburban Pacific Palisade. But when I was out of my car and walking towards the thin stream of light that leaked out of the front door, which was open inches, the Halloween goblins started coming back fast. They whispered to me of what I might find across the threshold ahead. It took only a fingertip to ease the door open. Then inside, in the middle of the living room floor, a framed picture of a girl face up. The glass over it smashed into a huge starburst, and around the edges, a trickle of blood. Ah, but the girl was beautiful. Hair spun from a red sunset. Skin as smooth as warm honey. 
generous mouth that laughed without moving. Still, except for her eyes, they were green. The green of emeralds, clear and wide and deep. And they laughed, too. But the sound she felt somehow wasn't nice. You will prove, Mr. Marlowe. Mr. Marlowe. Eh? Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, forgive me. It's uh, the first time I've seen a, a green witch. <laughs> well, it's Halloween, remember? Yeah. Of course, I know I'm missing the black dark teeth and the bushy eyes. My sister, what happened to her? Oh, it's probably the wind. What? But if I may, Count Alessandro Cagliostro awaits your pleasure. What? Oh, oh, that's you. Yeah, that's me. Oh, how nice. And um, how handsome for so bad a man. All oh, John said was you were an old friend. Your arm, please, Count dear. The green witch is ready. Do we drive or fly? <laughs> Satan himself couldn't have done a better job in the West Palisades Country Club. A building which was long and pasted too close to the edge of the cliff that plummeted 200 abrupt feet to the churning sea below was flooded in a sickly green light. While skeletons in the trees, hanging in the restless wind by their narrow necks, danced a shadowy jig to the accompaniment of the crashing surf. A long, narrow path which ran along the cliff's edge leading to the country club entrance was labeled Dead Man's Walk and every 50 feet a life-sized dummy of an infamous man perched on the balustrade and stared blindly out to sea. Somehow, you couldn't quite laugh. However, inside, life was more pleasant. The lights were brighter, the costumes five parts fun to each part fear, and Madeline was a little prettier than possible. And when she marched me up to a grand dame who was dressed as Marie Antoinette, but who was wide enough to have also passed for four of the ladies in waiting, I couldn't make my eyes let go. Oh, Mr. Marlowe, Your Excellency. Oh, as a lady of reception committee, I welcome you to our club. I said I welcome you to our club. Oh, well, excuse me. I mean, thank you. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I was looking for a friend, a, a beast with wings. Oh, oh, that one. John's over there near the punch bowl. That's been ever since he got here. Oh. Over there, a giant sized rum bottle for a costume. <laughs> <laughs> Quite appropriate, my dear. The only demon the gentleman on the inside knows is rum, believe me. And if he'd only. Oh, pardon me, you punish. <laughs> no wonder Marie Antoinette was executed. Hmm. Look, look, that man in armor, the one with the hump on his back, heading for the veranda. He's a heavy, too. Uh huh. Gentlemen's the notorious Duke of uh, Gloucester. Most historical hero. Mm, he looks perfectly ridiculous with that beach boy complexion. Yeah. And crew cut. Madeline, uh, you haven't powdered your nose yet, huh? Mm, but it doesn't need it. Oh, yes, it does. Honest, honey, besides, I need a breath of fresh air. <laughs> I feel faint. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, all around the town. If I fall down and break my crown, I'll, I'll, I'll bet I'll never spill a drop. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme. No, no. Hello. How are you? It is not. I just fell down and broke my crown. What? Say, <laughs> Duke. Uh, yeah? Hey, Duke, I'd like to talk to you a moment, please. What? Talk to me? What? Uh, who are you? Oh, yeah, I can't tell. Your mask pretty good. Quite deceptive. Yeah, well, maybe I can help you. For one thing, I'm an international villain of sorts, but another, just a nice run-of-the-mill guy. The kind who'd never refuse a stranger a light, remember? What? Oh, are you the guy? Uh... Yeah, the guy you asked for a light when he was standing in front of Albert Zingaro's costume shop. And before you can start talking about a smaller world we live in or start lying about how natural your appearance was there, let's have the truth. Come on, Tin Pants. Was it because of Dale Estes? Dale Estes? I... Uh-uh, you slipped. All right. What's the difference? Yes, it was because of Estes. I know that he's an escaped convict. I also know he's the one way I can get Madeline away from that worthless Mr... Shall I say Bishop? Or would you prefer the full name, John Estes? Bishop and Estes are related? Yeah, like in Brothers. Oh. Thanks, Duke. I'm much obliged. Hold on. Where do you think you're going? Keep your hands off, Iron Man. Your face is hanging out, you know. You'll not interfere. Not if I have... Get your hands off! When I dropped the 
Duke of Gloucester, his face twisted in hurt surprise, and his suit of phony armor landed on a flagstone path like a truckload of tin cans with him in the middle. He was still clanking as I left him and went back to the ballroom where I spotted my client, the beast with wings at the punch bowl again, making himself even more hideous looking by pouring punch down a slit in his neck under the long paper mache chin. When I got close enough to speak his name, he spun toward me like I'd stuck a pin in him. What? Uh, uh, what do you want? Hey, you're getting pretty jumpy, Bishop. You better take it easy. Uh, I'll say you're getting a little thick tongue. Don't you think you're riding the punch bowl too hard? That's really none of your business, is it? it certainly is. This is my business, too. You hired me to protect you against Dale Estes. But you didn't say one word about Estes being your brother. How about it? Well, um, I didn't think it was necessary. How'd you find out? I'm your sunburn friend with a crew cut, a hunchback, and armor. Oh. He's been checking up on you because he doesn't think you're worthy of Madeline. Oh, that's so. Mm-hmm. Where's Madeline now? I think a broom saddle, maybe. I don't know. Broom? Oh. Oh, yeah. I better go find her. Now, uh, listen, I think things are going to be all right. You can take it easier from now on. What gives you that idea, Bishop? Well, nothing's happened so far. Maybe nothing will. I'll check with you later. Tell you so, I simply must tell you. It's a spree. I'll bet. What's got your funny bone, Marie? Well, sorry there. The bottle, you know, a demon rock. Uh-huh. Well, he just told me that one of our wax statues out of the terrace is bleeding. Oh, is that terrific? Yeah. What a thing, Logan. I thought. Now, nobody believes me, but I'll tell you anyway. It's bleeding. Real blood, too. And that, that's too much. It's all right to have decorations. But using real blood is going too far. Well, you're going too far, Harry, with the punch as usual. You better leave it alone. And God will get you before the afternoon. No, 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 nobody believes me. I just... Hey, you, you believe me, pal. Got a wax tummy bleeding? Not really, Harry. Well, you should because I saw it. The one way down at the end by, by the stairs. The one in the brown sleeve too. Bleeding real blood out of a gash in brown his chest. Brown tweed suit. Oh, it's dreadful. Wait a minute. Did you brown. say brown tweed suit? Did I say brown tweed suit? Yeah, brown tweed suit. Yeah, but that's nothing. The real blood is the important. Hey, you, you believe me? Yeah, come on. Okay, come on. It's right over there, pal. Behind those bushes over there. Come on, you'll see. Nobody believe me when I, I do it. Well, where is it? I, I... Hey, it's gone somebody when I moved it on me. Oh, no. Oh, listen, listen, it was right here, popped up against the railing. It had a hat pulled down over his face, but I could see the gash in his neck from the light now on the top of the stairs. Right, come on, Harry, let's get... Hey, wait a minute, Bottle, you can be right. Well, what do you mean? What's There's blood here on the rail. Look, tell me, do those stairs go all the way down to the water? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, but it's an awful climb. But in 200 feet, there's a little boat landing down there. Well, I guess there's, there's more than that down there now, Harry boy. The bottle of rum stared at me out of the peak holes in his label until I started down. Then he insisted on following. The stairs chopped from solid rock along a natural path that wound over the face of the cliff were steep and rough and slick from wisps of fog that moved me quickly across them like wet, nervous fingers. But the bottle behind me was enchanted just enough to slip and the kid with every step and still managed to keep his footing. Halfway down, we saw a crumpled hat. Only a teaser to what we found at the bottom in the weeping yellow light of the lamp on the boat landing. He had struck on his face after plunging down 200 battering feet of jagged cliff. All that was left of the man in a brown tweed suit. The rum bottle costume beside me was still intact. But the little man inside of his liquor was wearing thin was beginning to come apart. <laughs> that's real funny. <laughs> Some joke on the rest of them all because that's no wax dummy there. <laughs> oh... Hey, that's, that's a real man. It was a man. Uh, I don't feel very well. Put yourself well. together and give me a match. Yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. Fall well, like that can do a lot to a man's face. Hey, hey, this guy looks familiar to me. What is From the back here, he looks like John Bishop. He should. It's his brother. I wonder if Bishop figured things would be okay from now on. Huh? What are you... Hold what it, you hold say? it. Listen. What, what's the matter? I didn't Shut know. up, will you? I didn't hear... Yeah, somebody's coming down the stairs. Get over there out of sight and keep quiet. As I made for the foot of the stairs, I looked up in time to see a hunchback monster in armor, half hidden in the writhing yellow mist, duck back from the edge. He eased himself down the stairs. It was the Duke of Gloucester again asking for another punch on his front pan jaw. So I took the slippery steps two at a time as far as the first blind corner where I found out that he beat me to it. Oh, oh, that even the stuff, mister. Not for long, bud. I'll trick you next time. I knew you meant trouble. Now I know what kind. That's enough out of you. Stand still. What? A gun. I know you don't. 
you kill her. Sudden lunge in the dark caught me off guard, and my 38 went spinning away into the night. He turned and ran. The fog in the night, coupled with a useless three minute search for my gun, was all he needed. By the time I got up to the clubhouse terrace again, the Duke was gone. I was met instead by the ever merry Marie Antoinette, only this time without giggles. Out here anyway. Funny, baby. Did you see that phony hunchback, the Duke of Gloucester? See him? Well, I certainly did. Oh? He practically ran over me, shouting something about a phone call. Oh, when I see that group right Where'd he go? Out. Inside? Don't you boys know it's dangerous? Later, baby, later. Right now, I want to know... Hey, wait a minute. That bracelet there on your wrist, where'd you get it? Where? It's the band of the ladies auxiliary of the West Palisade Minutemen. The what? The City Settlement Club. Look, do, do all members have a thing like that? Of course. It's got the club crest on it here. The ladies have bracelets, and the men... I know what the men wear. I just saw one. And if it means anything like I think it does, I'd better find Madeline Hughes, but fast. Have you seen her? Madeline? Well, now, let me see. Yeah, she's oh, the witch, the witch, the green oh, witch. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, the last time I saw her, she was walking down toward the fountain with that wonderfully horrible Mephistopheles. Oh, she and John Bishop, Bishop are a per- perfect couple tonight, don't you think? But I think right now would scare you cross-eyed, sister, but thanks for the tip. I'll see you. I ran past the row of wax ghouls guarding the terrace railing and over to the gate where the flagstone path started. And I walked as fast as I could without stirring up echoes down into the little sheltered alcove where the fountain was. There I saw them standing close together beside a pale marble bench half hidden in the shadows. A beautiful green-eyed witch and a horned nightmare with huge, leathery wings hulking over Will you her. listen to me? John, make up your drum. I've never seen you like this before. Well, I've got reasons. Dale is here in town right now. What? Yes. That means one thing. He's found out about us. He knows what we did to him. Wait a minute. I didn't lie in court about him. You did. But you didn't object when you found out. Instead, you celebrated by getting engaged to me. All right, John. Are you sorry? I said it the way I saw it. I've got me to worry about. But he went to prison with the idea that you loved him, Madeline. In fact, he was trying to get his hands on enough money to keep you happy when the cops caught him. Okay, I'm expensive. If he couldn't afford me, that's his problem. And his love, Madeline. Whose problem was that? John. John, what are you doing? John! I'm not John, what? Madeline. I've already taken care of John. I'm Dale. Oh. And you really are a witch, Madeline. So I'm going to strangle the life out of you. Like you did me. Hey, uh, 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 stay back, you. Take one more step and I'll plug you. That's the last, Essie, because it won't be any good. You're trapped here. Yeah, well, I'm going to get you, Nosy. And then her. And after that, all I got to do is walk across the dance floor in there and out the front door. And in this rig, I won't even be noticed. You won't make it, sucker? No. <laughs> well, drop, will you? Your gun jam, sucker. Now what? <laughs> Are you lousy? Here. Take it. Oh. My shoulder and arm were numb from the bullet. And I could feel my shirt front getting warm and sticky as I tried to follow him. But the flagstone path was ten miles long. And my legs were melting. I saw him go to the ballroom door and I made it over to the side of the building for support. But I knew I'd never catch him. I looked in the window and I saw him start across the floor. A garish horned beast with wings, shoving his way to freedom. A milling mob of prancing demons. I was flashing out. I knew it. I tried to yell to stop him. But the crowd inside was going crazy. Laughing and cavorting around the beast with wings. Clawing at him. Holding him, shoving him back to the door. I saw him fighting and then go down as the horde of screaming creatures closed over him. And then everything went black. Marlo? Marlo? Are you awake, Marlo? I won't stay long. I just want to thank you for saving Madeline's life. Oh, uh, Duke of Gloucester, huh? Well, I... I'm really just Bruce Wiley. The doctor said... Doctor, what is it? Where am I? Santa Monica Hospital, Marlo. You were shot, remember? Four hours ago at the Halloween party? Oh, yeah. Dear yeah. Lester, he got away, huh? Got away? No, he didn't. I just came from police headquarters where Estes confessed. Want me to tell you about it? Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I dreamed it. Well, 
Hefty's killed his brother, John Bishop, out in the terrace before the dance thing. He traded his brown tweed suit for Bishop's Mephistopheles costume so he could move around inside. Yeah, that's right. Thomas was caught there by little Harry, the rum bottle, remember? Mm Mm-hmm. But when the coast was clear, Hefty threw the body over the cliff and went in to dance in Bishop's Mephistopheles costume. Fine Madeline, yeah. Now, look, I know this already, but after he shot me, he was a cinch to escape. That's where it gets fuzzy. What happened then? Brother, as handsome a piece of irony as I've ever seen. The Mephistopheles costume that Bishop wore. Don't tell me. Yeah. Won well, first prize. That's all. And the crowd wouldn't let Estes leave until he received the award and unmatched. Oh, it's quite a scene. Police I called when I thought you were a killer showed up to take him away. Then we found you and Madeline out on the terrace and brought you here. And a happy Halloween to you, too. How's Madeline? Fine, thanks to your efforts. She's waiting outside now. I'll send her in, huh? Mm-hmm. He's awake now, Madeline. Oh, okay. Uh, don't wait for me, Bruce. Oh. Hello, Hanson. Hello, beautiful. Your throat's bruised. Yeah, it could have been worse. You figured it out just in time. Uh, they even had me fooled. His voice was so good. How'd you manage it? No, yeah, the corpse was wearing a wristwatch band from the Palisades Minuteman Club. They gave me the switch. And I knew it was Dale in the cartoon. I figured his only reason for impersonating his brother was... Would... And you didn't even have a gun when you cut in on him. That took a lot of nerve, Hanson. Right? Don't mention it. Uh, uh, where'd you get the license you leave? Not so fast. You heard some pretty bad things about me tonight. And probably thought up a few of your very old. Matter of fact, I did. You got that kind of face. Cast spells. Gotta be careful with it, baby. Now, uh, will you catch the lights on your way out, please? Wait I, I... a minute. I'm going to tell you something, too. I've been sent scared in the meeting night, and I've been thinking things are going to be different from now on. Yeah? Who's next, Bruce Wiley? Mm, I haven't decided. But whoever he is, Marlo, he'll be the only one, and he'll know exactly where he is. Does that help? Mm. I'll have to see it happen first, baby. Okay. I'm going to wait for a while, but I'll be back. Watch for me next Halloween. Yeah, wouldn't you catch your light? I'll catch the light on the way out. When Madeline left, sleep left with her. I got out of bed, went over to the window, and looked out. The sky and the ocean were still dark. But over in the east, the first glow of dawn was starting on the horizon. And the goblins flew screaming into the mist. Until next Halloween. At that moment, something moved across the fading moon. Something that looked very much like a beautiful witch. With hair red as a sunset. And cold green eyes. And then, and I saw something else on the white sand of the beach. The discarded witch's costume in green. And beyond it, just for a moment. I thought I saw Madeline leaning against a rock, looking out to sea. I never found out if it was Madeline or not. Because then the sun came up. And she and the costume and the night were gone. Adventures of Philip Marlowe, bringing you Raymond Chandler's most famous character, star Gerald Moore, and are produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Script is by Robert Mitchell and Gene Levitt. Featured in the cast were Eve McVeigh, John Daner, Paul Fries, Jim...